what access points does satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds their bodies now listen carefully you are about to learn something that is very very powerful access points please write are you ready there are three biblical access points Number one, covenants. Aha, uh -huh. covenants. Write it down. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men, sadly, including believers, covenants. Please just write it. Number two, ignorance ignorance number three disobedience these are the three biblical access points and the only access points that satan has if you ever find satan manipulating a life a destiny a region a family i don't care how long i don't care how great Believe me when I tell you, it is one or more or all of these access points. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience, ignorance. Number three, of the three, the most effective for Satan is covenants. Do you know why? Because covenants have a transgenerational implication. Covenants, ignorance, and disobedience are all interrelated. But covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis. Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will and the fallen man by his design is frail with several emotional vacillations. And if man is going to partner with God sustainably, there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions. Covenants. Because covenant is a non-emotional activity. That means you can't just decide to change it. Anything God wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously, he will tie a covenant to it. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. You know, believers play with the idea of covenants, and you will see that everything God takes seriously, marriage, he took it seriously, and he tied it to a covenant. Do you know why? Because he knows under normal circumstances, the couple can run away by the next day. So he put covenant, a non-emotional binding, so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel. There is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations. Salvation is a covenant. Whosoever believes him. If not, there are people who can be so bad, they don't deserve to be saved. However, because it is a covenant. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, it does not matter who that person is provided you confess with your heart let me tell you if you are given the keys for salvation there are people whose level of evil if you see them you will tell them don't near this altar however because it is a covenant whosoever believes in him even if you are Saul even if you are Paul whosoever the only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits 
I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement. That is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven. Mm -mm. Salvation is for men. Salvation is for men. The benefit of salvation extends to creation. But animals don't have to give their life to Jesus. They are already under the dominion of man. The same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter. Provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man. Because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships, non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. You are going to be given 500,000 every month. They calculate it for you per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi. And that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting. Covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar is simply a system of authorization. Again, we'll discuss that next week. When we talk about altars, an altar, because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven, in fact, God himself sits, his throne is an altar. A system of authorization. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne. He literally sits on an altar. An altar is a system of authorization. The assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding, even when those who initiated it are no more. An altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants. There is no true covenant until there is an altar, and that altar is built and ratified with blood. So that even though our forefathers have long gone, even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone, but the altars that represent the witness are still there. So after 50 years, 100 years, the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region. And every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant. Drink this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Are we together now? Watch this. When the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt, remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness, whether you are a Jew or not. Just find a house. The house did not have emotions. Provided there is blood on the house, whoever is in it you are saved but when you are in that house even though you are saved there will still be a difference if you wanted to become a jew there you have to submit yourself to circumcision however as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned 
the angel does not see men he's looking for the blood you know why because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody and like we say in theology when he came to some homes he found them already dead because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened so the angel of death will pass as far as the angel of death is concerned he killed everybody it's only that when he came some people someone had helped him kill the ones in the house so he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there listen that is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region this spirit when you see them have no fear through ancestry through bloodline or through their personal activities they have brought themselves to that point that is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access you do not cast it in jesus name it is the blood that speaks there are rules of engagement look at me as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man you would think god would look at man and say i am god i am creator man be free no when he gave satan the authority it was willful and it would take the blood this is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble go and read the history of many lands you will hear that they buried human beings they bury people alive do you know the power of blood and the power human beings were the zenith of god's creation and you will not just carelessly say i don't believe i force my mind to think right you are joking it takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is i don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it <laughs> hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar are we together because the blood of jesus speaketh better things every blood speaks something but with respect to what we want the only blood that can speak to the degree one million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house but you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is it can go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own you will be learning that the blood is one of the witnesses on earth do you know what that means there are three things that have lived as long as the earth one of it is water this water you are drinking you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles you don't know who else has taken it before it got to you that's why the bible says water is a witness it has lived long on earth recycling itself and blood nobody invents his own blood it is past that means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person except you are denying biology is that true i'm not a doctor but let's be intelligent for god's sake it took that blood to bring you so the blood cannot be as the same age with you There are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word and the father the spirit and the word and these three agree and on earth there are three witnesses the spirit the water 
and the blood. Many of us have found ourselves in situations today. Listen to me, we're wrapping up. You have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted. And as soon as you are done with the fasting, the same thing you prayed about happens casually. As if you were wasting your time in all that fasting. You were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you. And just when you finish the last fast, that sleep, you just took a little siesta. And that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting. Because there are rules of engagement. There are people who will not listen to me. The fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already. That is a symptom of an attack. Listen, I will always tell you, I'm not just speaking from scripture alone. I'm speaking from experience. There are things in your life that will never grow. There are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting god for some kind of liberty for yourself for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free and ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies the strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage when the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver deception happens the cure is not necessarily driving the deceiver alone but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge when you come to that point of knowledge now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you If a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your say your sibling and he gives 10 ten thousand and he says give everybody if you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there the person can even give you one thousand and you can kneel down he can even say go away this was for me is that true but if for any reason you find a way when the person wants to solve that problem he will come again and he will say let me repeat what i said i said this ten thousand is for everybody when you hear it that contention dies because immediately now you know the truth and based on the truth you know you can say my ten thousand no stories hand it over to me now in peace your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have when you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say ah did i talk too much oh god forgive me it's because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage listen i have held many charms with my bare hands i have prayed for many people this is what i do i have seen many spirits I have met many demon spirits i can tell you the strength of satan is in his power to deceive the strength of satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints the strength of satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding for john 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when you go to your village you may, most likely may see shrines you most likely may see a lot of demonic things around 
just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties but when light comes i don't know how true it is but i hear is the story of archbishop benson idahosa when i think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort and they saw the chicken it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die and they carried the chicken and said we can't waste this chicken like this and they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out the trouble is if you believe what god told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life